internet friends. Have you ever played a Game Boy game on your favorite retro handheld and thought to yourself, gee, I wish this looked just a little bit different? Well, if you have, then we are in the same boat. And today I'm going to solve all our Game Boy Color related emulation problems. No promises though. Let's get into the Gambate Palette Editor and see what cool things we can do with it. The Gambate Palette Editor is a neat little tool that comes bundled into the Gambate Desktop app, which you can download from this sourceforge.net website over here. I'll put the link in the description below. Be aware that when you run this software, you may be prompted to quarantine it by your virus scanner, as it may be detected as malware by some antivirus programs. It's fairly common for old programs like this not to play well with modern Windows. This is the official beta release of the program though, and I've had no problems since installing it. But as always, with independently developed programs such as this one, please use at your own discretion. So, once you download the app and get it all felt up by your antivirus program, go ahead and run it. This is basically just the standalone desktop version of Gambate, my favorite Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulator, which is often the go-to core for most RetroArch-based devices. You'll be met with this window, and you'll want to open up the Game Boy ROM that you'd like to run. I'll choose Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle for this example. You can see that I've already got my custom global palette loaded up by default, but we're going to change that in just one sec. Go to Settings, then down to DMG Palette, and click Current ROM. That'll bring up this palette editor window, and from there you can select each color in the palette and change it to what you'd like. I'm not gonna lie, this process is super fun and will eat up a lot of your time. So much of your time. Be forewarned, friends. Once you've messed around with the color settings a bunch, you just click OK to preview it on the actual game. You can go back to this current ROM palette menu to tweak your custom palette as many times as you like. As you can see, there are a bunch of color schemes already populated above, but I've created a handful of my very own. I really wanted a palette for Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle that would be pink themed, but also have orange carrots. It was very important to me, so I set out to make my own. When you're satisfied, click on this Save Scheme button and type in the name you'd like. If you're creating a palette specifically for a certain game, you'll want to make sure the name of the palette matches the ROM file exactly. And we've got our custom palette. Bugs Bunny is a nice bluish gray, the carrots are orange, the surrounding bricks are pink. Just the way I like them. Here are some other custom palettes I've created. As you can see, they are decidedly cut from the same pink cloth. Now, the Gambate core that you can download on RetroArch for most devices comes with a bunch of palettes already. There are even some pretty good pink ones, like the Cardcaptor Sakura palette, which was my favorite before I discovered I could make my own. I prefer my pinks to be very soft and pastel though, and sometimes the same palette just doesn't give me the look I want for a particular game. That's why it's so nice to be able to make something that is perfectly suited to me for each Game Boy game I love to play. So we've created the palettes. Now, how do we get them on our favorite handheld devices? First, you need to grab copies of the palettes from the palette folder on your desktop computer. If you're running a standard Windows PC, they should be located under this file path here in Gambate's app data roaming folder. Go to the stored folder and you'll see a bunch of .pal files. If you didn't name them to correspond with your ROM files earlier, you can do that here. We'll make a copy of these and place them in a separate palettes folder. From there, you can load up your RetroArch Enables device, either by connecting it directly through USB port or loading up the microSD card. The palettes folder goes into your RetroArch BIOS folder, so just make sure you know where that is. You can check the main RetroArch menu all the way on the bottom under directories if you're unsure. Just copy your .pal files to the palettes folder. You may have to create one if it doesn't already exist. If you'd like a global custom palette, just make sure the palette file is named default.pal and when there's no individual palette to pull for a ROM, it'll default to that one. 
Now, start up your device, open a Game Boy title, go into the Retro Arch menu, and select Core Options. Under GB Colorization, you want to select Custom. Once you back out of your game, it should have applied the custom palettes. If everything looks good, go ahead and go back into the Core Options screen, click on Manage Core Options, and select either Save Game Options to enable custom palettes for just this one game, or Save Content Directory Options to enable custom palettes for the entire Game Boy library. And there we go. Our Game Boy games are just as pink and pretty as we'd like them to be. When you'd like to change your global custom palette, you can just rename your default.pal file and replace it with another one. Easy peasy. I keep my palettes folder on my main retro games hard drive in the BIOS folder, so when I set up a new device, those palettes are ready to be imported along with all of my other BIOS files. And as soon as I load up a new device, I can have all the pink tetraminos and orange carrots I want. Alright, I hope this was as fun and useful for you as it was for me, internet friends. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you created any cool palettes of your own, please consider going onto the Discord server and showing us your creations. I'd love to see them. I'll link in the description below. That's it for now, internet friends. Oh, that was my Tamagotchi. <laughs> um, please be kind to yourself, be kind to everyone else, and happy, happy gaming. Bye-bye.